Hello, and welcome to another video in my Fundamentals of Orchestration series. Today, I'll introduce the percussion section of the orchestra. I'll discuss the categories of percussion instruments, the individual instruments in each category, as well as the role of the percussion section within the orchestra. As always, I'll be using sample libraries from orchestral tools to help in my demonstration. Before I get started, I just want to mention that I recently created a Patreon page where you'll have access to all the MIDI files, audio files, and extra materials for this fundamental series, as well as future music composition and orchestration videos. The link is in the description box for this video, so please check it out. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, let's get started with this one. I won't spend as much time tracing the historical usage of percussion instruments in the orchestra, as it has always been less predictable and more varied overall. Historically speaking, percussion instrumentation has fluctuated the most, more so than any other orchestral section, and composers have always been willing to adopt new sounds from anywhere in the world through the use of percussion timbres and colors. There are many ways to categorize percussion instruments, with the most obvious being pitched or unpitched. Of course, all instruments are pitched, but when I say unpitched percussion, I mean instruments like cymbals or drums, those instruments whose frequency content is much wider spread and not defined by a fundamental frequency that is clear and audible to the listener. There are many types of unpitched percussion instruments, and I think it makes sense to break these down into several subcategories, mostly based on material type like wood or metal. I then like to group all of the pitched percussion instruments, with the exception of timpani, together into one category. You occasionally see all of this instrumental categorization terminology like idiophones or membranophones, and I suppose that's essentially what I'm doing as well, but I prefer to use simple terms like unpitched metals or unpitched drums. To me, that's a lot more clear. Before diving into each category and subcategory, I first want to discuss percussion mallets and beaters. For many percussion instruments, there will be a default mallet or beater type that the orchestral percussionist will grab first. You as the composer or arranger can often specify the mallet or beater type if you like, but keep in mind that the percussionist usually knows best, and he or she may adjust your recommendation or sometimes even ignore it entirely. If you want a particular sound or color from a percussion instrument, it's common to indicate soft, medium, or hard mallet in the score. The percussionist will then grab the appropriate mallet for that instrument, whether it's felt, wood, brass, or plastic. Not every mallet is safe to use on every instrument. For instance, brass mallets are really only okay to use on metallic instruments, and some mallets are too delicate or soft to even make much of a sound. If you choose not to indicate mallet type in the score, the percussionist will usually know best and hopefully make a musical and intuitive decision for you. So let's take a look at unpitched drums. The largest of the unpitched drums typically found in the modern orchestra is the bass drum. There are two main types of bass drum, the first being the concert bass drum that ranges in size from about 25 inches to 40 inches in diameter. This is the standard bass drum found in both orchestras and wind ensembles, and is typically played with either sticks or mallets. The second type of bass drum is the pedal bass drum, found commonly as a part of the drum set, and occasionally called for in the orchestra. The pedal bass drum is obviously played more often with a foot pedal, allowing the player to utilize his or her hands for other instruments. When writing for the concert bass drum, you needn't ask for a particular size, for instance a 36-inch or 40-inch bass drum, but you can ask for large, medium, or small. Or simply writing bass drum in your score will work as well, and chances are the percussionist will make an appropriate decision. There's a standard bass drum beater made of wood and wrapped in felt, but several types of mallets can be effective, like yarn, rubber, snare sticks, and brushes. Here's an example of music for bass drum. Another common unpitched drum is the tom-tom, and it comes in many sizes and tunings from low to high. Composers can either write for a single tom, or in a grouping of up to five differently tuned toms. These cylindrical, snareless drums typically range in size from 6 inches to about 20 inches in diameter, with floor toms as large as 24 inches. They can be performed with drumsticks and a variety of mallets made from wood, felt, cord, rubber, or plastic. The tunings can be slightly adjusted, but it's best not to ask for a specific pitch, 
Instead, use terms like low, medium, medium high, and high, depending on how many drums you're requesting. When notating music for a group of toms, I prefer to use a full staff and assign each tom from low to high either a line or space on the staff. For example, when notating music for four toms, your score might look something like this. Though less common, roto toms are occasionally called for in the orchestra. Though I suppose these should be considered pitched percussion, I'll group them in with toms. Roto toms have a much finer tuning system and composers can ask for specific pitches. Although the individual drum heads can be tuned to precise pitches, it's uncommon and very difficult to tune these drums during the middle of a performance. Instead, you should indicate either the specific pitches beforehand or indicate low, medium, high, etc., similar to the normal toms. In this example, I've notated five individual roto toms together, similarly to how I would notate orchestral toms. The next group of drums is essentially a collection of toms with snares. The snare drum, piccolo snare, and the field drum are types of snared toms in various sizes and shapes. Most of these drums are about 13 or 14 inches in diameter, but they differ greatly in how deep they are. The piccolo snare drum is only a few inches deep, the standard orchestral snare drum is about 6 inches deep, and the field drum is closer to 15 inches deep, giving it a much deeper timbre overall. The actual snares are made from wires placed underneath the drum that vibrate when the top of the drum is struck. Snares on or off can be indicated in a score, and it only takes a few seconds to make this switch. The snares make the timbre brighter and much more metallic sounding. I'll now play the exact same music, this time with field drum, so you can hear the deeper timbre. And here's the same thing once more, now with the piccolo snare drum. Moving on, I want to cover one more group of unpitched drums although there are many more that I could discuss. This group of drums includes the timbales, the bongos, and the congas. These instruments are traditional Latin American and Afro-Cuban drums, and they became a regular member of the symphony orchestra during the 20th century. Timbales are snareless, single-headed toms tuned fairly high in pitch and played with sticks. They are commonly found in a low and high drum pairing and sound like this. Bongos are traditionally played with the hands, although modern orchestral bongo parts often use sticks for a more piercing timbre. There are many inflections and possible intonations on the bongos using hands, and it's not completely necessary that you indicate these on the page, though the percussionist may take liberties. If writing for bongos using hands, you might want to explore the traditional Latin rhythms, sounds, and notations. Here's what bongos sounds like using hands. And lastly, the congas are an extension of the bongo drums downward in register. They are played similarly to bongos and can be found in groups of two or three, or simply just one conga drum. They have a much deeper sound than bongos, but not necessarily low in pitch, although different hand techniques allow for lower sounds. Here's an example of conga writing. There are many other unpitched drums, including the frame drum, the djembe, and the tambourine, and while most of these others are not standard orchestral percussion instruments, they can in fact be used in the orchestra for contrasting colors, timbres, and textures. Moving on, here are a few of the more standard orchestral unpitched woods and plastics. Wood blocks are typically grouped in pairs with a low and high pitch. Tempo blocks are very similar, but pitched slightly lower with a deeper timbre. Orchestral tempo blocks are most commonly found in groups of five blocks, though this number can vary. It's very common to see the wood blocks placed directly next to tempo blocks, extending the pitch range upward. 
While both of these instruments are usually made of wood, they can occasionally be made from plastic, allowing for harder mallets that might otherwise damage the wood. Claves are traditional Cuban instruments made from wood and performed by striking one clave with the other. They have a bright, piercing timbre and are traditionally used to keep time like a metronome. Lastly, the log drum, also known as tongue drum or slit drum, is a traditional African drum played with sticks or soft mallets. In each log drum, there are two distinct pitches, low and high. The timbre is deep and resonant, but quite soft. In the orchestral percussion section, there should be at least one log drum, but this instrument is relatively new to the orchestra and having multiple chromatically tuned log drums in a row should not be expected. Here's an example of what these instruments sound like together. Next up are the unpitched metals, and I'll start by looking at cymbals. Cymbals come in a variety of shapes and sizes and are either suspended or on a stand or held in hand. Suspended cymbals can be struck with essentially all types of mallets, beaters, sticks, brushes, and hands for different timbres and effects. There are many types of suspended cymbals, including ride cymbals, which are usually between 16 and 22 inches in diameter and have a bright timbre. There are also splash cymbals, which are much smaller, usually under 12 inches in diameter, and are bright with a shorter ring time. Sizzle cymbals are similar in size to ride cymbals, but feature metal rivets that vibrate or sizzle in small holes in the cymbal. You can also add metal clips or beads to ordinary suspended cymbals to recreate the sizzle effect. China cymbals are shaped a bit differently and have a slightly more dissonant timbre and a short ring time. And lastly, hi-hat cymbals, which are two cymbals suspended one on top of the other with an up and down mechanism that opens and closes the ringing sound. Hi-hats are most commonly a part of the drum set, but on occasion, they're called for in the orchestra. Other than the standard playing techniques, suspended cymbals can be bowed using a string bow, which creates a very dissonant metallic sound. They can also be scraped with a beater and struck on the dome or rim for a slightly different timbral effect. Crash cymbals are very similar to suspended cymbals, but are held in hand and struck together. Thicker crash cymbals will have a stronger attack with a shorter ring, and thinner cymbals will ring longer with a softer attack. The vast majority of music written for crash cymbals will be single hits, but on occasion you might see rolls, scrapes, or even cymbals mounted on bass drums for unique timbres and effects. Here's an example of these instruments. Sticking with unpitched metals, here we have gongs and tam-tams. The term gong is sort of a general term that includes several types of suspended circular metal discs. Tam-tams are the largest of the gongs, and they are always unpitched, and can be anywhere from 15 to 50 inches in diameter. Because of its size, a fortissimo note on a large tam-tam can ring for over 10 seconds. There is a standard tam-tam mallet, and only one mallet is needed for single hits and for rolls. The tam-tam is a very common orchestral percussion instrument, more so than any other smaller gong. There are a few types of other gongs, including nipple gongs, which can actually be tuned to specific pitches, although a full chromatic set would be quite rare in the percussion section. It's probably more practical to just ask for small, medium, or large gong, and to not worry about specific pitches. Chinese opera gongs are also used on occasion in the modern orchestra and are smaller in size and feature a distinct pitch bend in the sound. The direction of the pitch bend can actually be specified and different sizes will be used accordingly. There are also wind gongs and a few other types, most of which are traditional Asian instruments and not as common in the modern Western orchestra. Here's an example of music for tam-tam and listen to just how long this fortissimo note rings after striking the instrument. There are many more unpitched metal percussion instruments, but here are just a few more of the relatively common orchestral instruments in that group. Anvils, brake drums, and metal pipes all sort of fit together and share timbral similarities. They are all loud, high-pitched, and obviously very metallic in timbre. 
anvils are actually quite rare, and it's likely that anvil parts will be played on a larger brake drum. Brake drums come in a few sizes and have a very loud and piercing sound, but one that dies away quickly. In contrast, metal pipes have a more resonant sound, but aren't as loud. Metal pipes can be cut and tuned to specific pitches, but it's more practical to ask for a few non-specific pitches from low to high. Triangles are one of the most common percussion instruments and can be either held or mounted on a stand. They come in a variety of sizes from small to large and are played with a triangle beater. Cowbells are loud and metallic and come in a variety of sizes. While they sort of have distinct pitches, they aren't very resonant, so the pitch dies away quickly. In contrast, Almglocken, also known as Swiss cowbells, are designed to have very specific pitches and have a more resonant sound. Thunder sheets are simply large, thin pieces of metal that can be struck or more often shaken to create a thunder-like effect. And lastly, mark trees, bell trees, and metal chimes are all very similar in timbre and design. Mark trees feature a series of chromatically tuned metal chimes organized from high to low, though it's not very practical to ask for specific pitches. It's much more effective to ask for glissandi in a specific direction or back and forth. Bell trees have a similar sound but are organized vertically on a stand, and metal chimes are similar to mark trees with a more random assortment of pitches. Here's a bit of music showing off some of these instruments. So before I get to pitched percussion instruments, there are a bunch of miscellaneous percussion instruments made from wood, plastic, metal, or from a combination of different materials. I obviously can't discuss every percussion instrument that's ever been used in the orchestra, so I'll just mention a few. The tambourine is a single-headed circular drum about 10 inches in diameter that features metal rings or bells fixed on the outside of the drum that produce the jingle sound. There are quite a few different types of tambourines from all around the world, including Greece, Turkey, and Brazil. The modern orchestral tambourine is often held in hand, which allows for precise and fast rhythms, clear articulations, and a variety of rolls, shakes, and effects. The guiro is a traditional Latin American instrument usually carved from a gourd or made from plastic. A wooden or plastic dowel is scraped across a series of grooves in the instrument, creating a scraping rhythmic sound similar to a washboard. Castanets are made from two cup-shaped pieces of wood joined together that make a clapping sound when struck with mallets, hands, or against the body. Orchestral castanets differ from the traditional Spanish castanets and are usually mounted with handles or to a stand. Shaker is the general term for any wood, plastic, metal, or gourd container filled with beads. Egg shakers and maracas are the most common, and the size and material type will have an impact on the timbre. Forward and backward strokes have subtle timbral differences, and a range of dynamics as well as rolls are possible. Rain sticks are related to shakers, but because of their size, they're less rhythmically precise than much smaller shakers. The flexitone is a fairly modern orchestral instrument that features a thin metal plate mounted on a handheld device with two mallets on either side of the plate. When the player shakes the device, the mallets strike the plate, which produces a metallic ringing sound. The player can also easily bend the plate forward and back, changing the pitch sort of like a musical saw. The lion's roar is a drum with a string attached from the center that produces a unique roaring sound when played. The player tightly grips the waxed string close to the drum head, either by hand or with a moistened piece of cloth, and extends their hand away from the drum, resulting in the vibrations from the drum head. A slapstick is constructed from two pieces of wood that create a cracking whip sound when struck together. Slapsticks are normally used even when an actual whip is called for in the orchestra. Sleigh bells are fairly self-explanatory and can either be performed by striking the top of the instrument or by shaking the instrument. A wind machine is a large device that features a piece of canvas that is pulled down over a large hand-cranked wheel. The canvas rubs against the wheel when turned, producing a wind-like sound. And lastly, the vibraslap is a relatively modern orchestral percussion instrument that replaced the jawbone and quijada instruments, which were actual jawbones of donkeys that could be shaken to produce a rattling sound. The vibraslap achieves a very similar sound when struck by the performer. As I said earlier, there are dozens and dozens of additional instruments that each have a slightly unique sound and can be used effectively in orchestral music. One of the great things about the percussion section is that there are really very few limits as to what you can use and write for. 
Various automobile and boat horns have been used, clay pots, construction and junkyard materials, and of course instruments from all around the world either have been already or certainly could be used in orchestral percussion writing. So that's it for non-pitched percussion instruments, and I'll take a look at pitched percussion now, starting with the marimba. The marimba is a large, keyboard-like mallet percussion instrument made with chromatically tuned rosewood bars. Each bar has a resonator tube below. Marimbas come in a variety of sizes, but the most common are either four and a third octaves or five octaves in range. Marimbas are played with yarn, cord, or rubber mallets, and anything heavier than that can damage the wood, especially at loud dynamics. The overall timbre of the marimba is soft and warm, and it blends nicely with most instruments. It doesn't project very well, so it can easily be covered up in thicker orchestral textures. Using two mallets per hand is possible, and advanced players are capable of arpeggios, rolls, and tremolos using four mallets. Here's an example of some music for marimba. The vibraphone is a similar instrument, but is usually smaller in range than marimba, about three octaves. Vibraphones are constructed with metal bars with resonators below, and a foot pedal that functions similarly to the sustain pedal on a piano. Most vibraphones also feature a motor that can be turned on or off to create a tremolo effect, and the tremolo speed can be adjusted. The timbre is a bit brighter and louder than on the marimba, and with the pedal, notes can be sustained quite a bit longer. Here's an example of some music for vibraphone. And here's an example with the motor turned on. The xylophone is essentially a smaller, more compact marimba with a much higher range and brighter, more piercing timbre. It sounds an octave above written pitch and the notes have a relatively short decay time. Because of its size and pitch range, it's often paired with agile woodwind passages. Here's an example of the xylophone. The glockenspiel, also known as orchestral bells, is a much smaller pitched mallet percussion instrument made from metal bars without resonators. It sounds two octaves above the written pitch and is played with brass, plastic, or rubber mallets. The timbre is bright, clear, and the sound resonates well through an orchestral texture. Here's an example. Crotales are very similar in range and sound to the glockenspiel, but have a slightly less focused and less clear pitch. Instead of metal bars, crotales are made from heavy, circular metal plates that are struck with brass, plastic, or rubber mallets. Crotales come in octave sets, each starting on C. Both sets can be placed side by side to have a complete two octave range. Because crotales aren't enclosed in a container like the glockenspiel, Individual crotale plates can be bowed to create a resonant metallic ringing effect. Here's an example of music for crotales. Chimes, also known as tubular bells, are constructed from a series of vertically placed metal tubes with a damper foot pedal that controls sustain. The timbre is similar to church bells and can be effective in mimicking church bells in music. Chimes are usually performed using specialized chime hammers, but other mallets can work as well. Here's an example of music for chimes.
And one last instrument today, one of the most important percussion instruments throughout the history of orchestral music, is the timpani. Timpani are constructed from large drum heads stretched over a copper bowl-like drum case, and each timpano has a foot pedal that allows the timpanist to adjust the pitch up or down. Each timpano has a range of available notes of about a sixth, though really the best sounding notes are in the middle of the range. The standard timpani setup has four drums, usually a 30 or 32 inch drum, a 28 to 29 inch drum, a 25 to 26 inch drum, and a 23 to 24 inch drum. A fifth smaller piccolo timpano is occasionally available, though rare. Timpani mallets are usually made from felt, but other mallets will work as well. The composer can indicate soft, medium, or hard if needed. Other than the standard playing techniques like single hits and rolls, there are several extended timpani playing techniques available. Because of the foot pedals, the timpanist can actually adjust the pitch during a note or during a roll, sort of like a glissando between notes. On occasion, you'll also see music for prepared timpani where an object or another instrument like cymbals or gongs have been placed on top of the timpano drum head, creating interesting sounds when the timpano is struck. Here's an example of some music for timpani. So I know that I've left out some very important percussion instruments, and I haven't even mentioned keyboard instruments like piano and celeste, which are often considered part of the percussion section, but I'll save them for another video. In future videos, I'll also be exploring how to set up an orchestral percussion section, and how to effectively add percussion textures and rhythms to your orchestral music. Stay tuned for those videos, and as always, I hope you've enjoyed this one. See you next time.